Oh, finding a doctor is so hard. Thankfully, there is a way. It's called ZocDoc, a place to find and book great doctors who actually have amazing reviews, many with appointments available within 24 hours. Look, look, look. You listen to all these health-obsessed folks on TikTok, but when was the last time you went to an actual good doctor? If you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc. There are thousands of top-rated doctors on ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. My friends, as David would say, go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods. ZocDoc dot com slash foods. So it is brought to you by Better Help. Look, man, mental health is so important and it's I'm so glad that we're all talking about it more these days. And that's why I F with better help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge, okay? Get a break from your thoughts, visit BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Dudes. Behind the foods, yo, it's the dudes. Behind the foods, the dudes. Behind the foods, yeah, it's the dudes. Behind the foods, that's actually really fucking good. Well, 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 look at us, dog. Brand new fucking new boys. Look at me with the shaved head, baby, and a nice fade from Sergio. <laughs> I'm so jealous, dog. Uh, I debate shaving my head like every other day. Really? I miss it. Let me tell you something. Uh, so there's a little interesting story behind this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not so much the, the haircut alone. I I consistently sh had my hair short for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the biggest reasons why I stopped shaving my head, people say I look very mean. Uh, so like you know my my resting face is actually pretty aggressive. Yes, so I know. So this I know. doesn't help. Right. So I started growing it a little longer, styling it a little more to kind of soften up the look. Yeah. But now I was like, you know what, David? Who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares, Jimmy boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I Jimmy actually <laughs> I loved my shaved head. Um, it was kind of it was my look for years. You know what I'm saying? And but I started growing my hair out specifically for, I was like, I got to act, right? Mm. If I want to act, I have to look a little more diverse in my appearance. Also, what a waste. Your hair is fucking luscious and beautiful. And there's that. I got to a point where we're getting a little older and the homies were, hairlines were looking crazy. And, you know, hair was getting real thin. I'm like, I got this luscious, beautiful hair. I should fully embrace it. Fucking you know? Rick just has a voodoo doll of you. Just <laughs> He's trying to pluck the voodoo doll hairs out. <laughs> like of just patches all over. <laughs> what the fuck, man? But you know what's stupid, too? When my hair got long enough, I started putting it in the bun. And I was like, now the bun is equally not. As diverse as the shaved head, you know 100%. what I'm saying? percent. It's just another version of it. Exactly. It's like, nah, I can't, I'm not going to be like, you know, playing businessman with a man bun or like whatever the fuck. You this know, it's like, I, so I got this, so I stick with this like medium, medium situation that I can kind of switch up. But There's not a single gap in that hair. <laughs> it's just so luscious. I can't stop staring at it, you piece of shit. Well, thank you. Thanks, man. You know, I just How gotta... often do you shampoo your hair? I shampoo my hair... Every, like, three days, See, maybe? that's probably why it's so luscious. I was doing it twice a day. Yeah, you told me that. And you're not supposed to. That's why. And look at Twice this. a day? Oh, like, when you wake up and when you go to go sleep? Go to sleep. I think when I started growing it out, I realized that, like, maybe I don't need to be washing this shit all the time because I would realize, like, when I was at peak greasiness, it was looking Beautiful. The best. Yeah. There's like a weird balance of like if it's too dirty, it clogs the pores and then your hair falls out. Right. And there's the other one where it's like you do it too much, you're just fucking up your scalp. Yeah, man. I, just, I felt like one time, you know, my hair was looking beautiful and I just put I, in my head, I was like, damn, no one get close to me because I stink. <laughs> 
this just stinks right now. I just knew it. I mean, greasy hair does <laughs> smell pretty, especially on a dude. Like, dudes just have this weird funk. We're so just, like, moist. I don't know why guys stink so much. Well, David, I'm so hungry. This is, we haven't done a nighttime. I don't know if we've ever done a nighttime dudes behind the food session. And it's scary up in this bitch. It's motherfucking scary. The building is scary. Outside the building is scary. It's fucking frightening, dog. I haven't been driving around at night in a minute. I've been home with the babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, the ladies I've been out is like, I don't know, like six or seven. Wow. So to come be driving around on the freeway at night, I feel like. I'm pretty washed, bro. I was driving around like, eh, I don't like this. No, here's what it is, man. We live a better life now, so why? <laughs> yeah. You know when I go back to Sacramento at certain parts where I used to just kick it outside, just loiter around? <laughs> I'll drive by and I'll see, like, kids yeah. do the same shit I did. I'm like, look at these fucking hoodlums, dude. Dude, like, what? What could you possibly be doing at this hour? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm like, go home. <laughs> It'll make no sense. I'm going to take some pictures. This is some beautiful sushi I ordered for us. Um. So this is actually from a restaurant I've been wanting to take you to for a minute. Oh. It's, it used to be in K-Town. They moved to Glendale. It's called the Seaweed Hand Roll Bar. <laughs> you call me Jimmy, boy. <laughs> well, I mean, look, no racial, but you look like fucking Jimmy, boy, with your head shaved. <laughs> um, all right, I ordered some fire shit. Wow, though. this looks so good. Uh, we got some uni, of course. Ooh. They got... This shit right here, it's like um, they got the truffle, Ooh. caviar, uni on top of like um, I don't even know. I didn't even I didn't even look at it. I just clicked it. We got the snow crabs, snow crab, scallops, motherfucking scallops. We got um, a spicy lobster hand roll. <gasps> we got a um, hey, fuck this food, dog. <laughs> this fucking trash. This shit right here, I think this is uh, okay. It is uni, the ikura. And um, that might be some Toro. Yeah, all I, in I was doing something special. Never mind. Nah, bro. Okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, I got and I got two of each hand roll for us because I was not trying to share this shit. <laughs> I'm gonna overeat today, and I don't care. Well, we deserve it, dog. October was kind of crazy. Robin says I don't need to earn my fucking calories, and I. Right, all right. You know what it is? You don't, and I'm glad you're finally <laughs> accepting it. No, I still don't believe it, but today I don't. <laughs> well, fake it till you make it. I love you, Robin. <laughs> there we you. go. I'm going to get some of this uni because I love me some uni. I need this snow crab because. Hey. Hey. Mm hmm. Today is a blessed day. Today is a blessed day because I haven't seen you since your motherfucking wedding. Congrats one more time, my guy. I know, dude. There's some funny stories about that wedding, too. Let's talk about it, bro. Let me let me just dive into this truffle uh, uni situation here, too, because mm -hmm. this is wild. Wow. This is like $300 worth of sushi right here. <laughs> okay, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> you're fucking... Is this Wagyu? Is it? I didn't even look. I just ordered it. <gasps> Ooh. It's Toro. Oh, my Lord. And uni. And caviar. And, oh and my, truffle what savings. Is, this is so good. Mm. Mm. I brought a snow crab fried rice and it's, I thought this was the shit here. I kind of, okay, what am I doing, huh? I wasn't in, initially going to do this. Wow. That old, I was scrolling for what our available Postmate options were or Uber Eats options were. And I saw this shit pop up. And um, like I said, I've been meaning to eat with you here because they always hook me up when I go to. It's so good. Um, And they're... They're dope. Um, yeah, it was in K-Town. Now it's in Glendale. And it's popping. Hold on. I'll, I'll get one of these. You can have the other one. Oh, yes. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. Today is my birthday, huh? No, dude. You just got married. Congratulations. You know, this is the funniest part about my wedding. Mm. So, last minute, we just had to get this DJ. Uh -huh. And he was he was the host or two or whatever, right? It was full of music selection. <laughs> he completely ignored my other playlist that I had. Really? For the dance music. And he only went through a few of them. And he started doing as he goes, I know some better hits. Really? Because he kept playing Taylor Swift <laughs> at the wedding. You know the last song? I think you left earlier before that, but the last song, he goes, You're the British dude. He goes, This is a song that everybody loves. <laughs> and I thought that Mariel wanted Taylor Swift. Mm. So he played this. And you could see, there's like a clip of me just kind of like, <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to mouth the words. I'm a little drunk, you know, but I'm like, hey, if the wife wants it, fine. 
So we're all just jumping and dancing to it. I wasn't really feeling it, but why ruin the mood? Right. And I told after the wedding was done, I was like, so you really like Taylor Swift? She goes, no, I thought you requested that. I'm like, what the fuck was that shit, dude? Because I had some hyphy ass music in really? there. Really? Dang. And so I don't know. What Taylor Swift song was it? They say we're from Juliet. Yeah. Then it was that one, which yeah. is a good song. Yeah, I enjoy that song. But yeah. not my taste. I, I mean, I get it. That's pretty annoying. This is your wedding. You should have had everything that you wanted only. And I was drunk, so I didn't really care. Right, right, right. But I did spend a lot of time on the 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 fucking reception. He actually played that, thank God. <laughs> when when everybody was eating and chilling. I'm like Oh, your playlist for that was great, dog. And I should have known that he didn't know what he was doing because he he came up to me, he goes, Do you mind if I keep your playlist for future weddings? Oh <laughs> I was like, that, that means you don't have one yourself, dude. <laughs> I mean, super nice guy, but old. <laughs> <laughs> he was really a lot older than I expected. <laughs> well, your wedding was great, man. Um, super intimate. Yes. I've never been to a wedding like that intimate before, to be honest. I mean, to be honest, I haven't been to a, a, a lot of weddings, you know, until you, you kind of hit a stage in your life where everybody's getting married and having babies and shit. Literally, dog, that week and a half in October, it was officiating your wedding, baby shower that I went to for the homie, groomsmen at Eric's wedding, and then... I was kind of, you know, I'm trying to write this movie and shit, right? So I'm trying to, like, write nightly. <laughs> and, and I was trying to have, like, a first rough draft done by the end of October. But my mind was so wrapped around uh, your, you know, officiating your shit. Great job, by the way. Thank you. It was really good. Yeah, I guess we didn't really get a chance to talk about it yet, huh? Yeah, no, we did, you did a great job. I feel like it was such a good moment because you and I are always jokes. Yeah. And I did my <laughs> vows was all jokes. Your shit was all jokes. Yeah. I feel like it was probably... One of the funniest, most fun, like quick little wedding reception thing going on, wedding wedding ceremony. Here's what I remember from your vows the most. <laughs> <laughs> this fool, Mario gave the sweetest, <laughs> the sweetest vows, and and it and it and it totally relates to what I said about you guys too, which is great. Yes, because the the I think his vows peaked with like. I knew I loved her when she let out the hugest fart on our first date or some shit like <laughs> yeah. that. And he's like, and the funniest shit is like, and then you asked her, what was that? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, dog. I think people really enjoyed that whole thing, dude. For sure. It was 20 minutes. I wanted it super concise, mm -hmm. especially because when I officiated your wedding, mm -hmm. it was concise and quick. Everybody enjoyed it. I was like, That's what we want. Yeah. We want it to the point. Get everybody to laugh real quick. They enjoy everything, and then we move on. Your speech was amazing. Thanks, man. Everything was just perfect. When I was writing my shit for you, I went to go watch my wedding. I was like, how long did David talk for my <laughs> shit? And it came out to like two and a half minutes. I was like, sick. Mine's like three minutes. Okay, cool, 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 yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, Because I didn't really know what to, you know, I was low-key kind of like, I was a little nervous, you know? I've never done no shit like that, mm -hmm. where not only am I... Not allowed to be completely myself mm. because this is a wedding, you know. I don't want to be making dick jokes, right? But also, there's people there that have no idea who I am. There's people like churchy folk probably. There's old Korean folks there. And I'm like, okay, I kind of have to walk a fine line in my head, right? Um, and plus, I wanted to, you know, say some cute shit. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> after I did my shit, Gio was like, hey, hey, dude, good job. And I was like, thanks. She's like... You made me think about life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's because she's forty. She's gonna die soon. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> she's like, you made me think about how I shouldn't have gotten that tattoo on my. <laughs> <laughs> After doing this speech, she goes, "What have I done?" <laughs> <laughs> but if y'all, if y'all, uh, you probably you don't have like a wedding video going on YouTube or anything, no, no, right? No, 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 no. So I did a whole thing for Eric for David's wedding about how like. Uh, I I got oh, oh this is my favorite okay my opening my opening line was this this is great I was so proud of this I was like how do I open this shit up funny I was like all right we're gathered here today for the union of these two beautiful people Mario Song and David So <laughs> 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 but basically my shit was a whole like this long extended metaphor about how you know David's cooked me stuff like. He's redone it multiple times because he just couldn't get it the way he wanted it to. And it was all about how marriage is a lot like trying to cook the perfect 
dish because you might think you have all the um, steps you need for the recipe, but you can still fuck it up and yeah, you need yeah. to continue to like tweak it and and uh, grow with it and, you know, uh, just make it your own to make mm-hmm. it right, right. It was better at the time, guys. Yeah, don't, for don't, sure. <laughs> don't, right, just, don't worry about it. It was way better at On the time. On paper, it's amazing. It was amazing. He had this cute little fucking book. <laughs> It was adorable. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, yeah, I'm glad. Oh, 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 that's what I was gonna tell you. That's right. Because remember when I went went up to you, I told you I had cut a joke. Mm-hmm. So, now mind you, I had this whole extended metaphor about like, yeah, you know, you gotta be willing to make mistakes in the kitchen and shit like that, right? So, I was like, at first, I was actually gonna find a little fucking Bible verse about balance and compromise. But that's just boring, dog. The Bible's fucking boring, bro. There's nothing good in there about compromising relationships, right? If you sin, you die. <laughs> Pretty much, dude. So I was like, all right, all right, forget this. God's like, hey, yo, chill, 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 man. <laughs> no, God's like, you know I ain't write that shit, right? <laughs> I didn't write it. It <laughs> exactly. was my thing. Yeah. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I was like, well, let me go kind of funny. So then I'm Googling Guy Fieri jokes, uh, quotes. Yeah. And I found that Guy Fieri quote that was like, you know, Wait, hold on, why Guy Fieri, dog? <laughs> because it's cooking, and because okay, but no, out of all, there's fucking hold on a second, hold on a second. There's so many chefs we know. What the fuck? Because why Guy Fieri, dude? because that's where the comedic genius comes in, David. So, so <laughs> did you did you not realize it was a Guy Fieri quote? <laughs> Anthony Bourdain. No, 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 no. Okay, I did go for Anthony Bourdain quotes as well, but then I was like, no, this is so secretly funny <laughs> that I'm making a Guy Fieri quote, right? So the quote that I ended up using was just like. You know, if you're not making mistakes in the kitchen, then you're not cooking right or some shit like that. And which perfectly tied into my message. Mm-hmm. But there was a second half to that quote that and I was going to keep going because it was ridiculous. And it was going to be like, yeah, if you're not making mistakes in the kitchen, you're not doing it right. So when I got the fat scraps, I give no, when I got the scraps, I just give them to my dogs in the back and they're getting really fat. <laughs> I was going to read that whole shit. Yeah. And be like, see, guys, you got to you got to make sure you take the. Got to take your scraps out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> take your scraps out. Give them to your, give them to your dogs, so you you can make your marriage it's right. It's better without it. <laughs> it's better without it. As well, like Guy Fieri. I was like, cause you cook, so I went to Guy Fieri. <laughs> the man, the man that dressed like a fucking crackhead for the past like thirty years. Hey, hey, hey. He's the goat. Um, which which uh, <laughs> hand roll would you like? I don't. Hey. This is a spicy lobster. This is the one with all the fucking. Oh, we gotta go with fancy. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm so hyped. I'm actually going to take a picture for this. Uh, Please do, because I'm not going to. Because uh, I've been wanting to. I, look, I've followed this place on Instagram for so long before I even went to go eat there because I was like, what is this? Wow. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Oh, my Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, my Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm. Pull the tab to the direction of the arrow. Pull the tab to the direction of the... Oh, and then you pull this out so it doesn't sog everything up! What? How do you do that? So you pull... There's a tab and you rip it and then the plastic is actually inside the roll too so it doesn't sog the thing up. Oh, wow. Wow. Damn, I didn't know they were hooking up there to go shit like this too. Yeah. Oh, and there's a lower one too here. Wow, this is lit, guys. Seaweed hand roll bar crazy. in Glendale. Wow. Whoa. And then there's a number two. There's a lower tab. So pull the lower tab. What? There's a lower tab too. How does that work? I don't fucking know. This one confusing the fuck. Okay, out now of me right it's now. getting a little. And now it's a little complicated. Now I'm a little annoyed because I just want to bite this shit. Oh, does it pull out the, oh, you pull it out the, you pull it from the back. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Smart. Cheers. Cheers, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Married boy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm. No soy sauce needed. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just came in my pants. Jizz in my pants. Mm. So how was the? I, I left Loki early. How was the rest of the wedding? It was great. Meryl got drunk. That's fun. I've never <laughs> seen Meryl was drunk before. Well, she doesn't turn red or anything, so I don't know when she's drunk. Mm. But in bed, no. <clears throat> like sex? No, no, no. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, 
Most of the time when people get married, they don't fuck on the night. Mm -mm. We've been running around all day, mm -hmm. shooting photos, exhausted as fuck. Our feet are tired. We're, we haven't slept. Mm -hmm. We haven't rested. We haven't really eaten either. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So most people don't have sex, and we were no exception. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> tired. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of was like cuddling her, just, to, you know, being a good husband, cuddling her. <laughs> But she was so hungover already. She was like, don't touch me. And the whole night, I couldn't sleep because this was her. Oh. Oh. Damn. She, she does, and does she normally, she doesn't really drink like that, huh? No. Except for like in college or back in the day. You know, as an adult, she doesn't drink like that anymore. So she was just moaning all night, not from me, from the alcohol. <laughs> what time was that shit over? No, she was at like 5 a.m. What? Oh, no, we were there. No, it ended at 10, but we stayed till like 11. Yeah. And then we got home like around 12. Okay. And then she was just moaning and groaning from pain <laughs> oh. till like five. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't leave that, that late. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I would have died. I left Loki early, right? Because Chia went home early because um, we actually, we had her sister in town to help with the multiple weddings that week. But um, Veda was, has been very needy specifically towards chia the past like month or so like where i'll go i'll go through the whole bedtime routine with her read her stories um you know tuck her into her little sleep sack she gets into and i'll be right there and she'll be like mommy whoa she, i want mommy to tuck me in you know and she has she sleeps with a blanket now she's like i want mommy i'm like are, are you sure baby now mind you i've been in the fucking bedroom with her for like 20 minutes now reading stories like uh, 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 picking out pajamas and all that, and get to the very last one. Mommy, I want mommy. So, oh, yeah. So in Chia's mind, you know, yeah, <laughs> like Veda likes Chia's sister, but we were a little worried that like, what if she just gets real mommy needy again, and then Chia wouldn't be able to enjoy her night. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and plus. It was just yeah she, she she was wasn't feeling she was feeling a little uneasy about it so got you yeah so she she stayed for the ceremony then bounced and then you know I drank a bit and then I was like all right I'm gonna get the fuck out of here yeah 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 <laughs> and look because it was a smaller a smaller wedding too we got to you know splurge on a bit of the food and then we got to have an open bar with a lot of different alcohol which is great so because <clears throat> i know like sometimes when you go to weddings there's an open bar it's only like a couple of drinks mm -hmm. i was like stack it out that's stupid <laughs> yeah i was like stack it out like, well we're gonna talk about the after party right after this break Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Better Help. Listen, I've talked about mental health a million times, and Tim knows we are all about that mental health because mental health is mental wealth. If you're not taking care of that brain of yours and that heart of yours, what are you doing? Because I know you spend time in the gym to get that physical fitness up there. Well, what about your mentals, huh? You are important. You are loved and you need to know it because my friends, it's all about the happiness, happiness of life and you deserve the best. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash foods today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Hey, I know you guys just heard an ad, but this episode is also brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. We dropped a bunch of fire shit, including this collaboration with an artist named Tori from Seattle. So check it out. Super fly. We got these super fly hats dropping as well. Check it out. And I have pants on from Secret Society. Oh, you got them. Yes, I did. I don't even have those. And I love them. Yeah, they're fucking great. We have some new. We actually just launched our first full collection this year because of all these production issues. <laughs> But a whole bunch of new bottoms. We actually have some new pants. You probably look good at them. I'll probably grab you a pair of that. Tight. So you look fucking good. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so your wedding was super cute. Um, it was nice to meet your mom. My mom was having the time of her life. I saw. Dude. It was adorable. She was having so I don't know who that woman was. I was like, <laughs> you're usually kind of a B word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After um, your dad danced with your boy, who also, oh. 
He's great. Yes. You talk about him all the time on your shits. That's him. He's cool. Yeah, man. I've, I've known that guy. <laughs> I, that's my best friend. I've known him since I was 14 years old. Yeah. And like usually when it's like functions like that, it's like me and him on the dance. Well, yeah. I had to go do my own thing. So mm-hmm. he was he was doing what he was doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Doing the best man thing, getting people on the dance floor. Fucking love that guy. Killed it. How you spell his name again? Uh, N-G-A-B-O. Yes. I was trying to find him on um, Instagram. <clears throat> Don't have one. Ah. He, he low key. He's All low key, right. low key like that. So it's funny because, you know, of course, I've heard so much about him. The, the the great Gabo and um we were and another part of my speech when I started for you is I was gonna be like man I, and I was like y'all are looking like uh kind of rich Asians right yeah and I was gonna say man y'all are looking like kind of rich Asians and Gabo <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a fun wedding man everything kind of worked out really I mean there was a few hiccups here and there but other than like I mean it's not supposed to be perfect but of course. I think like, just like that recipe that you got to cook. All right, we're done with that now. <laughs> it was good in the moment. I hate it now. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Uh, dearly beloved. <laughs> if you did that, I, w- I would not have been. Na- I would have laughed so fucking hard. But of course, Marilyn wouldn't be laughing, but I would have been yeah. dying laughing. <laughs> uh, and I remember uh, after Gabo danced to Gangnam Style with your dad. Yeah. You were like, I've never seen my dad do this ever in, in my entire life. Ever. I've you never mean like seen- dance? Or dance. what? Really? I've never seen him dance. What? Yeah. Because he's always, like, people don't understand, too, the the vision I have of my father and the most memories that I have are yeah. traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Because he, he was a different person then than he is now. Mm. Back then, and understandably for me as a young kid, mm. I don't understand what my dad's going through as a fucking adult. You know what I mean? Right. Like, poor as shit, barely getting by, fucking taking loans out on the house so we could pay these fucking bills. He has a badass kid, me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, just stressful everywhere. Like he has to take care of his grant, all this other stuff. So I had a guy who was just at, at on edge, twenty four fucking seven, yeah. and he was a, a pastor. Mm. So when he was at home, he's just short tempered all the time. Uh, and now that all the kids are grown up, he sees his kids married. I get to see the side of him that's like, oh my, oh, you, I, I get that from you. Oh, you get to see like who he is without all the stress and struggles of like life. That's yes. crazy. So he's a different person then. And it was like, so I was dancing with my mom and there was like this moment. And I wrote it in this post too. I started tearing up because I've never seen my mom this happy before. Aww. Right. And so like that was like a weird core memory where I, I think I'll forever remember like, you know, dancing with her and seeing her smile at me. And mm. I think that's going to be stuck in my head forever. Aww. So that was one of those things too, where I fucking hate weddings. I've talked about it. I hate fucking weddings. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to have this wedding either, mm-hmm. but it was worth it because of that. Yeah, man, because I know, you know, you were you were fine with just doing the courthouse shit. And you were like, look, man, this is for y'all. I could care less. But uh, now you're glad you did it. I'm really glad I did it. Got drunk, got to dance or whatever, whatnot. I had to keep it a little clean because there are kids around and, you know, Christian thing. But Ugh. it was it would have been a little crazier. You want some fantasy? OK. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get this lobster here. Yeah, fuck yeah, dog. Take a bite of that. I'm gonna pull you some Hennessy. I'm gonna get some cups from Robin Couch. Be right back. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, tell me, um, what was your favorite? Um, when you were when you got married, what it was? Oh, thanks, Robin Couch. <laughs> have you have you ever had dreams? Will you do that? Do that? Do that? That? <laughs> I will tell you this, man. It really is true. The wedding isn't so much for you as it is for the people that you love. Yeah. And God damn it, it's fucking expensive. I had a small ass wedding. That shit was still fucking expensive, man. Look, uh, someone told me this and it's completely facts. Whatever you expect to pay for your wedding, you're going to pay like double. Yes. Um, You have your shit. You think it's all budgeted out. You're like, I could do this. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, man, fucking you don't anticipate how much flowers are you know the of course food alcohol also too because of inflation and pandemic like i'll put it to you like this right i went to my friend's wedding out in napa and his thing cost about the same that mine did but Mm. his was in napa valley and it was twice the amount of guests so because of inflation all these venues are twice as expensive everybody's prices are up so it was yeah that was like the biggest thing bro not gonna lie Rolling up to your shit, we were like, 
Where the fuck does David David have us right now? Oh, same with me too, because I didn't see the venue because Mariel did everything. So I walked out. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then you go into this garden. Like, what it's, is this? Right. It's like so. Me and Chia got there kind of early, you know. Um, mm. And we roll up, and at first we pulled into the little like industrial area behind the house, like next door, and we were like, "Did this fool run out like a fucking?" I don't know, like a like a clubhouse or something. Like we didn't know what it was. And we checked the address. And then I actually like kind of Googled it a bit and I was like, oh, I see. Cause it looks like it's just a house in the middle of like nowhere. Nowhere. Um, and then you you open those double doors to the backyard and it's like, oh Oasis. Beautiful. I saw that. Did you see that like TikTok about it or whatever? Mm-mm. Um, so I guess the owner of the house. After, uh, like, when he got divorced, he was just, like, depressed or whatever and, like, was just, like, started working on his backyard and made it all beautiful uh, for years. And then someone was like, you should rent this out for weddings. And and then they did. It was amazing. Yeah, it's, like, really dope. Fucking koi fish pond. Little turtles everywhere. The lights, everything. The trees, there everything. There were turtles? There was turtles in there. Yuck. All right. <laughs> Fucking gross, those diseased bastards. Damn, you killed the lobster already? No, I was hungry. Oh, fuck. I was so hungry, too, because I knew I was going to be eating with you, so I didn't really have, um, like, lunch lunch. Um, well, I had lunch, and I was still hungry. <laughs> I had just been, I lost all that weight, and then now I'm just like, you know what? Let me just keep it right here. Well, let me ask you this, man. How you feel now that you're uh, uh, ceremony married? I mean, you've been actually married, but, like, is there anything changed at all? I mean, you I, know what it is? I don't think there was a lot of change in me, but there was a, I think there was a change in Mariel, though. Really? Because already there was a change in her when we had, and we talked about this, too. I asked her. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> fucking good. And I asked her, what did you, did you, when she said, when you had the first look with me, what did you feel? And mm. I was like, hey, don't take this the wrong way. <clears throat> I didn't feel much. Mm. And it wasn't because you were beautiful or anything like that. Nothing will ever replicate the feeling of the first time we got married, even though it was in the courthouse. Mm. That hit me hard. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, we're fucking married, you know? And I remember that. That's my core memory of her. Us fucking around, jumping in a parking lot, having fun. That is the peak for me. Mm -hmm. This, looking at her, looking beautiful. It's like, I know you're beautiful. I've seen this. You know, we, we've been married. So I've already right. had this experience. And that's why I really meant that this wedding was for others. Mm -hmm. Right? So my joy came from watching everybody have a good time. Um, people really enjoyed the wedding. They said it was dope. It was small. It was intimate. It wasn't mm -hmm. crazy. Everybody kind of knew each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of felt like a big Christmas party or something. And I think, like, I didn't realize. It kind of made me like, hey, maybe I should just throw a party every year. Dude, that's so funny. Well, for one, you got a piece of seaweed, right? Right. Up oh, in, thank you. Uh, in in one of them. <laughs> I wasn't gonna let you live the whole episode with that. Thank you. Um, for two, I felt the exact same way after I had my wedding because I had such a great time. Man, we just throw a fucking party, dog. I be thinking about that shit all the time, bro. Like just getting a venue, dudes behind the foods, venue, food trucks, DJ, drinks. Let's get it. Here's what I've been trying. To, well, hell yeah. First of all. Um, Goody, we've been trying, we've been talking for years, ever since I got married, about doing a <clears throat> Goody wedding, like a fake wedding, where people can come in formal attire, get drunk, we we'll do like, I don't know, some f like clothing giveaways, have a fake ceremony and shit, you know, just have a big party. Because people have done prom, I think Young and Reckless does like a prom, mm -hmm. but we're like, let's do a fucking wedding, but we always forget. Um, but yes... I, I, throwing the wedding made me feel like, should I just throw parties? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, why the fuck not, right? right. I mean, because the wedding itself costs a lot. Mm -hmm. But throwing a party with, like, some food venue stuff in here and there, you know, we put it in a budget. It's not that much. Could get sponsored, potentially. Get it sponsored. Like, with, with the wedding, there's the wedding. There's the whole thing. And once yeah. you say wedding venue, the price goes up like a motherfucker. Mm. So it's it would be, like, a quarter of the price. You know what we could do easily that I think about a lot, too? Um, uh, Send Foods Fest. Hell yeah. Like, we are so linked up in, like... The food industries, like, first of all, we got so many homies that would just pull up and be a part of it as, as far as vendors. Mm -hmm. And, like, I actually kind of, um, I really enjoy the process of finding venues and, like, 
uh, you know, when we did the Howlin' Ray's Goody collab, um, I was kind of in charge of like you know, getting booze and shit. And I found a sick, oh, this is actually this Michelada guy that I, we that we met at uh, Smorgas. Smorgasburg. They pulled up. They got a dope setup. It's like a um, a van that turns into a Michelada station. And they also have like Hell yeah. turntables attached. It was like a whole thing. I just kind of like doing it. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel like it's something I could get into if I wasn't, you know, destined to be famous and shit. But. Dude, <laughs> next year, guess what's happening? We throwing parties? <clears throat> we throwing parties. Or at least a Send Foods Fest. I think yeah, so. I think a Send Foods Fest would be really fucking dope, dude. Yeah. And everybody comes, enjoys, you know, whatever. Comes, get, dude. Yeah, comes. C-U-M-S. Comes. I was filming a um, a Doritos uh, brand deal, like just Instagram Doritos shit. And, um, you know, mind you, I didn't know anybody. I knew a couple people on set, but like... No one that was, like, my homie, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be professional. Like, I, I enjoy being on set. I, I enjoy, like, being good at delivering what the people want, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like when you go on to set for some shit like that, there's always a... Wow. Right. Unprofessional. I apologize. There's, there's always a, a preconceived notion of, like, who's this fucking YouTuber? Always. You know? And, uh, but first of all, it was a teleprompter, and I kill that shit, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're doing it. We're kind of going through the day. And um, at one point, I was supposed to say panko breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, you, you take your panko bread comes. And I was like, ha, comes. <laughs> <laughs> up until that point, I hadn't made any dirty jokes, right? So I was like, ha, comes. And like three people turned around because there was like a, a higher up from Doritos there who was supposed to make sure everything was straight. Everyone looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was chilling. So okay. then, so then I was, I was like, I already had been killing shit the whole day. So I'm like, I'm good. They're not gonna say shit. No I, way. I'm good. So then, anytime someone's like, okay, no, it's coming soon. I'm like, ha, coming. Yeah. <laughs> I kept making cum jokes, right? Yeah. So then the director, she wrote and was directing the commercial. Uh, she wrote and was directing the commercial. And so, uh, we were making these little macaroni balls, right? And she, she's like, she's like, oh man, it was so hard to not write a bunch of ball jokes in the script. And I'm like, yo, grow up. <laughs> it's like, dude, like, ew. I'm, prof I'm professional. Yeah, dude. yuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? We're gonna come right after this. Yeah. Dudes Behind the Foods listeners. This podcast is brought to you by Zoc Doc. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and ask literally everyone you know for their reco? You know a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable? Well, my friends, wipe your tears away, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. Let me tell you something, man. Finding the right doctor for you is super important because not everybody knows your vibe. Not everybody cares for you the way that you want. Well, guess what? When it comes to a doctor, you need to find the one that understands you and gets you what you need. And that's where ZocDoc comes in. My lovely dudes behind the foods listeners. You listen to all these health obsessed folks, but when was the last time you went to an actual good doctor? If you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc. There are thousands of top rated doctors on ZocDoc that are all listed with verified patient reviews so you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience and an actual medical degree also gets used. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient review doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. Ah, uh, David, so cheers. Cheers, I've been sip, sip, sipping away. So have I, so have I, so have I. Oh, yeah. Did you notice my cool tattoo? Oh, yeah, first of all, your <laughs> child is bleeding from the eyes on that, and, and we're in this scary-ass <laughs> building. I hate that tattoo right now. <laughs> yeah. That shit creeps me the fuck out right I now. I know, so you saw when I, I sent it to you, you Beautiful. were like one of three people that I was texting as like, how's getting it done? By the way, I couldn't believe it. 
I, I literally couldn't believe it. I was like, this guy's fucking with me right now. Like, yeah, he's fucking with me. He thought it was fake. Yeah. Was like, this is fucking fake. You're lying. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, I really thought you were lying. No. Look at you. You're going to get tatted the fuck up. That whole thing's going to be sleeved. Perhaps. You know, this is kind of, I mean, this is my second tattoo. It's my first, like, big boy tattoo, I guess. Fucking I still can't believe you have a six tattoo. Six hours, dog. Um, 12.30 to, like, 6.30, she was putting the little final touches on it. And so it was beautiful when it finished, right? But then, like, so... And then they put the little tape on it. The little it's, it's called sa- sa- Saberderm or some shit like that. It's like a tape band-aid that you can shower in or whatever. And the ink, you know, kind of starts to, it'll spill out a little bit. The ink that's in your body, it'll start to come out a little bit. And, and as your body heals, and that's what's happening around the eyes. So the eyes got all black. The hair got like all blurry and black. And I was like, this is scary. <laughs> she looks possessed. It's like, it's like your, your daughter died and then she's coming back alive in your arm. And yeah. it creeps me the fuck out. It looks like some scary movie shit or, or like a t-shirt brand that's trying to be edgy. You know what I'm saying? I miss you, father. That's <laughs> what that shit looks like. It's so, put it away. Daddy. Oh, God. <laughs> Where's mommy? Oh, bro. I was going to tell you this. I guess I told, I told Rick this uh, on No Chaser the other day, but. Veda's been doing this shit recently that's so funny, but I don't want to laugh because I don't want to encourage it. So when she gets pissed, she speaks in a very specific cadence, okay? So, for example, I was trying to buckle her up into her car seat, and she wouldn't sit back for some reason. She just kept, like, scooting up. I'm like, Veda, hey, I need you to sit back, okay? And she goes, the sun's in my eyes! (laughs) So, I'm like... Don't laugh. I want to crack. I'm like... I had to turn away because I'm cracking up. I'm like, baby, don't don't raise your voice at daddy like that, mm-hmm. you know, but it's so funny. Explain it to daddy calmly. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's nice. The sun's in <laughs> my eyes. Yeah. So that, we're like, babe, it's time for bath time, baby. We got to, you know, get a fish, get to finish your dinner. It's time for bath time. I'm still eating my food. <laughs> Still too bad. <laughs> and it's so funny. These kids are so lucky <laughs> that we know self-control and the kids are going to be kids. Because when I was at, I did that shit, <laughs> fucking beat down, dude. <laughs> it's like, who the fuck are you talking to like that? You out of your fucking mind. Blip, blop, blip. And now we're just like, oh, they're expressing themselves, but you're still in trouble, but I'm not going to whoop your ass, you know? Yeah, our, our kids are so lucky, dog, Talk. that we kind of have this mentality of, you know what? My child doesn't know how to express themselves yet. Blah blah blah. Because it's facts. Mm-hmm. You know, you get it gets super frustrating. But then, like, you know, it really just takes reading a couple articles to be like, yeah, they really don't know how to express themselves. Like, yeah, they're learning. They gotta let it out any way they know how, which is like just yelling and swinging at shit. You know, like it's like learning to let them know this is not okay. Yeah, without socking them. It's <sighs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm the adult here, so I got to be controlled. So you don't do this. This is very wrong. But in my mind, I'm like, you're so lucky. <laughs> you're so lucky I'm mature. Dog, even even beyond that, right? Because I'm sensitive. <laughs> you know that. You're like, don't yell at daddy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to say early on, um, because she's, you know, because she's so kind of really even emotionally mature now for her age, I feel. You know, at first we were talking about how well she speaks. Now she really, like, um, is, like, sensitive to stuff and caring and um, considerate. But I remember I was trying to put her to bed one time, and what was she doing? She was just kind of, she was doing something, and I was like, I was like, Beta, you know, this this hurts my feelings when you do that. This, this is not nice. This makes daddy feel bad, right, when you do this. And then there was some other, some article I read that was like, you shouldn't do that either because your child, your toddler should not be responsible for your feelings. You're a grown ass person. Mm. So to be like, yo, you making me feel bad thinking, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm teaching her a lesson on like how to treat people. But she don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> these articles be always saying everything, dude. That's true, You too. ain't got to read into all this other shit. Every article has something to say that tells you you're a bad fucking parent. I mean, and that's facts as well. You know? And I'm I'm a terrible parent, I learned. Um, <laughs> it's like no. everything you do is like, you're a bad parent. You're a bad parent. <laughs> I said, hey, my dad threw a chair at my head, <laughs> and I still love him. <laughs> I still love him. <laughs> Me! <laughs> I saw a TikTok the other day that it started off as one of those. And it was like, you know, it's like, so now instead of telling my child, hey, please don't do that. 
I tell them and it cut <laughs> to another mom. She's like, don't you fucking stop that shit right now. Or I swear to fucking God. Dog. <laughs> you know what's so fucking funny? I did a video on that same video. Mm. But I didn't see that lady's video. Mm. I did the same thing, but I did it in Korean. Mm. Was she in a, wait, what is she? Where, that's fucking crazy. Wow. Hey, great minds think alike. <laughs> well, I wonder who did it first, though. I think she, is that she, yours or mine? I don't remember. I was, I was just eating. Okay. I was like, what? It was, hey. a white, it was a white woman in a car. Hey, lady, if you did it first, kudos to you. You're a fucking genius. But if you did it second, then what? That's fine, too. It doesn't matter. It's TikTok. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody does everybody's content. And plus, that's like a joke that I feel like everybody would have done either way. Facts. So that's whatever. So, I don't even care anymore. Who fucking cares? I do. Because let me tell you this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't control it. There's such a blatant rip off culture. Oh, yeah. Um, that really bothers me. Um, I want to see her video now. I'll it say, must be so funny. I, say, I saved it. Um, like, I know sometimes TikTok, there's shit that's just a trend and people do it. Because it's a trend, you know what I'm saying? And it might be the same joke, but you're supposed to change it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. I hate that. I think some people, dog, they'll, they'll literally rip off an entire joke. like Beat for beat, beat word for, for word. Beat for beat and not, not say, yo, this was inspired by or LOL, I got this. I saw something that made me think of this. They'll just do it. And that really, really irks me. You know, well, see, now I feel bad because if she did it before me, I got to credit her. <laughs> But not when it's basic shit that a lot of people could have came okay, up with. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, well, I thought my shit was genius. But, <laughs> well, I mean, whatever. But I, Not to say your shit is basic. <laughs> I posted this thing on my story of like, you know, there's this video where they take a skeleton and they start cracking it for chiropractor mm -hmm. stuff. Doc, I've seen like 80 people do that. I'm like, dude, why, why do, if it's already done, why are you doing it again the same fucking way? What's the point? What's the point of this shit? I don't get it. Like it blew you know, my I, mind. I do know the point. To get likes and views off of someone else's idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. And look, I understand, like I said, people have similar ideas, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you took it, let's say you don't even credit it, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, I think that's a funny idea. I want to do my own version of it. Mm -hmm. Change it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, add your own flavor to it. And I, and I understand. Sometimes people come up with the same shit. We, um, me and Melvin Greg, who is popping on Vine, who's a popping actor now, um, he, oh, he be building shit, dude. Yeah. Oh, his shit's great. It's amazing. His shit is great. Um, and in the Vine days, he did a Vine. It was like a catfish parody that was very similar to my YouTube video parody where it was like, it was kind of like um, we flipped the joke where this guy, um, he meets his chick and she's super skinny and we were expecting a big girl and we're like, what the fuck? I wanted a big girl. You like reverse catfished me. That was the whole bit, right? So when he put out his Vine... People were tagging me saying he ripped me off. I'm like, no, it's like, it's really, it's not that difficult of a concept to yeah, come up yeah, with, yeah. right? But some people, man, like, oh, man, one of these ideas, here's a joke that got done to death by a million people. The, um, when you're a hitman's first day on the job. Oh my God, dude. And they poison the drink and then they dip their finger and die. So many people did the exact same shit. Like, why, what, why do the exact same shit? It's just, I... Dude, I'm so glad you brought that shit up, dude. <laughs> that one was cycled so fucking much. Every time I scrolled, dee, 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 yeah. dee, it's like, dog, what's the point now? Change it up. Yeah, please do something different. It really, really just grinds my gears. It grinds my gears. Well, like, you know, I've said this before, too. Social media has become a space now, not for everybody, right? And once again, I'm, we're not being nitpicky because I'm saying, oh, just do it differently. Yeah. You know, the it was for the untalented person to pretend like they're talented. You know what I mean? It's Social the, media. Yeah. The non-creative person to pretend like they're creative. Mm. Right. And so you'll see, too. And like I said, no hating because cream always rises to the top. Wait, it's some creative people on there. No, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Cream always rises mm. to the top. And you'll see the creators on social media when they go to a different platform, how much they thrive because mm. it's their own creativity. The ones that constantly just take other people's jokes and recycle them, Jason Chen, they have like these <laughs> issues. <laughs> okay, I'm fucking around. I'm fucking, but he's not creative at all. <laughs> like, I listen, that's my boy. But he can sing though. Oh, he could definitely sing without soul. And he's but. <laughs> <laughs> this boy, we're friends, right? But I always bust his balls. It's yeah. like, dog, could you just do one original idea? 
<laughs> I've never seen somebody do covers of other people's music and then cover other people's comedy. Yeah. Um, I love you, Jason. You're a fucking amazing guy, but Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> you made me want to fucking run into traffic head first. I fucking love this guy. He's such a funny dude, too. But they do numbers. Yeah, but he's he's a, he's actually, a, people don't know, Jason yeah. Chen is fucking hilarious. Yeah. He's a funny fucking guy, which blows my mind. I'm like, dog, you're funny. You guys were in a music group together. You're in a singing group together. hundred yeah. percent. You want to hear something funny about this? Yeah. We would be recording. I'm not the musician. I'm the right. hobbyist, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, he would say this to me. He goes, hey, can you sing my lines? I'm just going to copy what you do. I was like, ah. how are you going to do a cover, which is already copying, and then copy <laughs> somebody who's doing the cover? <laughs> you fucking uncreative fuck. So he would like, what, copy like your run? My or runs. Oh. I'm like, do your own thing, you jackass. Well, I guess that goes back to the, the joke you made of like, uh, he can sing, but there's no soul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's technically one of the, in my, that I've ever met, technically, his... His vocal control is actually really amazing. If you see Jason ever record in a booth, if you're ever lucky to, his vocal waves are straight like this. Mm. He can control his voice really fucking well. It's it's actually astonishing. He's like a savant. But damn, is that boy soulless, dude. <laughs> that shit is soulless as fuck. Some people don't like soul, dog. Some people don't like ass. Some people don't like soul. You know, That's it's true, a, man. He's, they, he's basically white. They go hand like, in I'm hand. Kidding, you know? I'm kidding. I love white people. <laughs> you guys are funny. He's talking about gingers. Ginger, soulless. Wow, that's not nice, dog. I'm sorry. Great ginger people. I love them. Ginger is healing. You know, my first <laughs> my first girlfriend ever, and I'm not talking about Tina Park. I'm talking before Tina Park, was a ginger. Really? Karen Davis. Did you get to see the rug downstairs? No, I was in seventh grade. So Never mind. It didn't get there. Yeah. But well, people in our school did. But I mean, that's facts. It was a Christian school. I guess that's also irrelevant. But uh, no, she was my first kiss. Karen Davis wow. in the stairways leading down to the cafeteria. Did she take your soul? She was a cheerleader. Uh, well, I wasn't that experienced yet, so we didn't even like. Well, not my first. You got to kiss a cheerleader. Uh, yeah, dog. And guess what? Eighth grader when I was in seventh grade, my guy. I had a, a, a hot, a hot girl too, and her name was. She went to a different school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his her name was Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I hate your life. <laughs> your life is just so, so fantastic. You got to kiss the fucking hot cheerleader who was a year older, never in my fucking life. It makes me a little nervous because I feel like all my favorite celebrities have something very traumatic that happens. I was the uncool person. Yeah. I was never, and you're just sitting here in the corner like, hey, my life was great, guys. My life is good. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> really? really? So you're telling me <laughs> you never wrestled. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, this shit better not be leading up to something Some disaster. Up. Yeah, doc. Hey. Life is good for you, man. You got this bleeding face tattoo. <laughs> you know, your, your child's crying out blood. <laughs> All right? You That's, bought this amazing fucking feast here. This was so good. This was so fucking good. Yeah. We're going to have to eat this on the next episode. Yeah. And I don't care what you think. I'm, you're going to have to eat it. I'm going to take a bite or two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take three bites, damn it. Well, look, I was looking, I've been, I've been looking good lately, but after the weddings, uh, yeah, I, I started going in again and I kind of like, yeah. That was me too. Like I, uh. Literally three days, because everybody's trying to buy me meals, right? Uh, and so, what am I say? No. Mm -hmm. Problem, as you guys already know, I have tro problem with a uh, portion control. Mm -hmm. So I'm either in or I'm out. Yeah. I went all the way in. Yeah. I gained eight pounds in like four days. Oh, my God. It was heartburn. I felt sick. <laughs> and I just kept eating through it. And then afterwards, like, hey, maybe you should just, after you're full, stop. Yeah. And then now I went all the way back down again. It took another week, and it was it wasn't a lot of work. It's just like you know, just stop doing that. I think that's the main thing, man. Like facts, like taking that second to be like, "Am I full? Yeah. Oh, I don't need to finish this. Oh, a hundred percent. I didn't have to eat any of this. I literally ate in the car before I took a nap. <laughs> but I did. Why would you do that? You know what we do on this show? Yeah, but I was so hungry. I had to eat something. One of your fucking followers followers quote unquote you know we posted that reel of a clip from the podcast of us doing the munch and she was like i appreciate how your boy is eating while you guys are doing this like wow what a dream job i'm like 
Girl, that's what we do for the past two years. <laughs> we we eat on the fucking podcast. That's what we do. <laughs> Dudes behind the foods. <laughs> I was like, man, David's followers are fake, dog. Hey, man, my followers are great, all right? <laughs> They're fantastic. They're beautiful. They've been supporting me since day one, even though I stopped being popping years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Thank you all for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Motherfucking Foods. Um, watch us next week where we force this uh, fried rice down. <laughs> Don't say forced, man. <laughs> you just had to get this fucking extraordinary thing. I thought I was doing a great job. I was in a mood. Because I haven't been out at night in a very long time. It was fucking delicious, dude. And I was, uh, tengo mucho hambre. So. Oh, hey, hambre, my hair color. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bye. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dude, 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 dude.